Bonjour, mes amis. Today we're going to talk about the next kind of augmented sixth chord. And as you might have already guessed, it's French. So let's get in there. We've already learned about the Italian augmented sixth chord, but today uh, we're getting a little French. So we're getting a little wee oui, wee oui, wee. Oui. Ça va bien. Uh, all right, so here we go. So let's talk about the French augmented sixth. The Italian we saw was only three notes. Uh, so it was our interval of the augmented sixth, lay to fi, and then it just added do. We also said that that was one of the only, or that was the only three note version. So we already know that we're getting into more notes, and the French just adds one more note. So this is a four note chord. The beauty is, again, it's so, it's so similar to what we were doing in the previous one. Just like the Italian just added one note from the interval, the French is, as you can see, just adding one note to what we had in the Italian augmented sixth. So in the Italian, we were dealing with, uh, we were dealing with our lay, fi, and then we just added do, right? So it was sort of a lay, do, fi. The French here is adding the note re to that. One of the more unique, one of the more unique sounding chords, which I think is lovely. So this is the augmented sixth interval of lay and fi, do and re. Let's take a little peek here. So if we use A minor as our example, we're gonna find that our French augmented sixth chord has the this the note lay again in the bass, which in A is F, right? So if we were in A, do, re, me, fa, sol, le, we've got le in the bass, F natural. And again, le is a half step above sol, so we also need that note that's fi, which is a half step below sol. Sol is E, so we need fi, sol, D sharp to E. Everything's the same. And so if I just played in this first example here, if I just played the bass tenor and alto voices. And as we're all dreaming of all the time, leaving out the sopranos, if I left out the sopranos, we would have, that's an Italian augmented sixth. But of course, sometimes in life you can't leave out the sopranos because you need someone to say, hey, bonjour, what about me? I'm here too, right? And what we find is that the French augmented sixth has this amazing part writing going to a five chord because re, the note we've added, right? We had le, do, fi, and re up there. That's a common tone with five. So this, this chord is so beautiful for a moment where maybe you had a melody that was here and you're going me. it's common between the French augmented sixth and five, making a pretty jarring sounding chord, right? Pretty jarring sounding, have this beautiful smoothness that eliminates some of the, some of the punch of the chord, which is really lovely. Um, we, can, we can see if we investigate the chord a little bit further that it's really unique because enharmonically, if we sort of respell some things, it's two pairs of seconds. So we, we can see A and B, Do and Re, right? That's pretty easy to see that that's a second, right? A to B. But also D sharp and F. We, we sort of think not D sharp, but E flat is kind of like a second. So this chord in many ways is these two seconds, like E flat and F and A and B. Right, and, and that's kind of amazing that we can take something so disjointed and non-chordy, right? That just doesn't feel very chordy and put it in a context where it really can work so well harmonically. And it's it's got, just like all the augmented six chords, it's part writing clarifies 
its function so clearly that we have no doubt where it's going, even though it, it kind of on its head makes no sense. Lay and fee are kind of like a second. Do and re are kind of like a second. What if I just said, hey, those two notes, those two notes, there's my chord. That makes no sense, but give those pitches some direction. Lay down to sol and fi to sol and re is a common tone. I mean, now, now you really have something that's pointing in clear musical expressive directions. All right, let's, uh, let's get into some staff paper here. Not really staff paper, but let's do some practice with this and see if we can do some part writing. So here we are. First, we're in the key of C minor. There we go. For whatever reason, that first chord really threw me for a loop. Maybe just going from A minor in my head to C minor didn't work. Here's A minor, C minor. Yeah, that's that's a good one. Okay, so here we go. Um, we're in C minor. So first and foremost, let's see if we can just build just build this augmented sixth chord. And again, we always want to keep in mind our solfege syllables. So we need we know that we need lay, fi. Right, that makes our augmented sixth interval, do, oops, and re. That's the French augmented sixth chord, le, fi, do, re. So in C minor, what note is going to be le? What note is going to be le in C minor? Well, think about do, re, me, fa, sol, le. It's A flat. And again, remember that in the key signature, in the key signature for uh, for minor keys, lay is going to be there. So even though we know it's playing a pretty intense role here for us, and it's we sort of count it as one of the weird notes of the augmented sixth chord, it really is, it's in the key signature of minor keys. So sometimes we can overthink that a bit, but it's, it's there. And again, you really want to keep, it's a half step above sol. That's what goes in the bass, lay, a half step above sol. Okay, so we've got lay. What's fi? What's a half step below sol? So what's the leading tone, in other words, of G? Well, leading tone of G is F sharp, right? So we could sort of come here and let's do it this way. I'm going to put this in the soprano voice. Uh, is F sharp. So let's do this. Let's add in an F sharp. So that's fi. So we've got lay and fi. Lay and fi. And then we just need do and re. We're in C minor, so do is going to be C. I almost said do is going to be do, which very helpful, right? And then re is D, right? Whoopsie. What happened here? Let's try that. Why don't we try that again? Why don't we just try that again? There we go. So there's our French augmented sixth. This is a really tight voicing of it, too, because we've got le, do, re, fi with the seventh or the augmented sixth on the outside and the do and re second on the middle. Right, when you, I mean, that's the beauty of this chord is when you do it out of context, it really does sound kind of ambulancy. Right, which I kind of like. So there's our French augmented sixth. So now we want to put that into, put that into a little bit more of a musical context here. So our French augmented sixth is gonna go here we just found that the bass note should be A flat, right? So let's pop an A flat in there. That's lay. So our, our progression here is gonna be one, French augmented sixth to five. And and just listen to that. You can hear that downwards leading tone motion of A flat of lay so. This ornaments that so well by pairing it with the the upwards leading tone. Of G, so let's do some uh, some part writing here. So, what do we think? We've got lay, that's pretty easy. Which of these notes should uh, work the best going to fi? Which of these notes? C to fi, fi in this key is F sharp, not going to be so good. E flat to F sharp is an augmented second. So the sopranos, they they have a really nice sort of motion to F sharp, and again, and I just really want to um, point this out. What just happened there? That once we know which voice is going to do that, in most cases, 
it's really easy then to do the next step because we know that we need to have phi resolve to sol, right? So just have lay going downwards and in the soprano here, phi sol. So that's our augmented sixth interval. Let's fill in the other pieces of the puzzle here. We need do. Well, look, we've got a common tone with do, so the tenors can keep on C. And this is really nice because we've got a common tone here. We know what's left is re, so we'll add that here in the uh, add that here in the alto voice. Here's re, and then uh oh, I don't know what it is. Re does not want to happen. There it is. And then re is a common tone with our G chord, G B D, B natural D. So I can keep that common tone into this measure, which is really nice. So we've got these these two middle super clashy notes, D and C, which also form this cool like common tone uh, common tone network in a sense. And then our tenor friends can sing the leading tone, can sing B here, B natural, right? So our progression there, we're in C minor, so we've got one to the French augmented sixth to five. I mean, that's such a... And again, just to illustrate it, I mean, that chord on its own sounds like this. But in context, where it's filled with motion and direction, man, it's really, really lovely. Okay, let's do it in uh, G major now. So here we go, we're in G major. First and foremost, we want to spell, spell the French augmented sixth. So what bass note are we going to have? And again, I'm just going to borrow this, bring it over, because we want lay, fi, do, and re. What bass note is going to go with this? It's lay. So in G, we've got D is sol, a half step above D is E flat. So our bass note, syllable lay is going to be E flat. I can just throw that E flat down here. Right, we've got lay. And so here, this is one where it's really clear that it's a, it's a quote unquote weird note because it gets that accidental. Remember, in minor, lay is in the key signature. A flat is in the key signature. In major keys though, lay is not. So that's gonna really clearly look like a weird note. We've got lay, what's gonna be phi here? What's gonna be phi in G major? It's a half step below sol. So if D is sol, D is sol, phi is C sharp. Let's throw that in there. I'll put it in the tenor for now. So the tenors are gonna do C sharp. There's our there's our augmented sixth interval. Right? That can resolve outwards to an octave. And then we need Do and Re. Well, that's pretty straightforward because we know Do is G and A is Re. So I'll just throw A there. And then uh, let's do it this way. We'll just add Do, right? So again, illustrating that super clashy two pairs of seconds thing. So there's our augmented sixth in G. And again, this would be in G major and in G minor. E flat's in the key signature in G minor, but it's still part of the chord. So we got lay, fi, do, re. Right? All right, let's do some voice leading here. Uh, we have a little progression going from one to four, six, to the French augmented sixth, to five, seven. So our first two chords, we're on one here. Go to four, six, and then we're gonna go to the French augmented sixth. And we know what note should be in the bass here. We just found it. It's lay, which is E flat. E flat. So, okay, so again, we want to find find the crazy notes first. So which voice is most naturally going to get phi, C sharp, of this 4-6 chord moving to French? It's the alto line because they're on C natural. So they can do this really great motion here to C sharp, right? They can get to C sharp, which is gonna be a nice chromatic line for them. Uh, and then we've got G doubled. G is one of the notes we need. 
So that's great. So let's keep that in the let's keep that in the tenor voice. Let's keep the tenors on the common tone here. And then let's give the sopranos re, which is a, right? So now we've got our French augmented sixth. Le in the bass, Fi in the alto, Do in the tenor, Re in the sopranos. And it's going to sound great coming from this 4 6 chord. Ah, you got to love it, right? And then we're going to go to a 5 7 chord. We know that there's a common tone with 5 7. What note of the French augmented sixth is common with 5? It's re, because this is going to be a D, F sharp, A. We'll talk about that seventh in a second here. But that means I can just keep the sopranos on A here, which is great. Uh-oh, there you go. Keep them on A. We need an F sharp. Which of these voices would be best for F sharp? It would be the tenors. So the tenors are going to sing F sharp down here, right, like that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Here's F sharp. So now we've got D, F sharp, A, and we've got one voice left. And notice that I'm asking for us to make this a 5, 7 chord here. That adds one little fun piece of the puzzle here, because which voice is probably going to end up with the 7, or not probably, who's left? The altos here. Now, we had the altos on Fi, which really should resolve to D. But if we want to make this a seventh, we sort of have to mess that up a bit. Uh, and so we're going to give them C natural here. But again, I know it seems like that's sort of a, like, are we breaking the rules? Are we doing whatever? This is where you can trust that part writing and know that you kind of had, you had, well, there's one other way we could have done this. But this is a pretty, pretty standard way to make it happen because we took everything followed it where it wanted to go. It's going to resolve like that. Um, and this came came out kind of naturally. Again, I like I said, you could have done it differently. We could have put D in the alto and had the sopranos jump up to C. It would have been an incomplete 5-7 chord. Then we wouldn't have gotten the common tone. So no matter what you do, there are some... You have some choices. And again, we're not going to call them, they're not bad things. They're musical choices. They're expressive choices that the part writing that's built into these chords gives us room to explore. Uh, but that's because they so clearly go where they want to go or want to go in a specific place. All right, so that was the French. Merci beaucoup. And let's uh, look at the German next.